Hey, what's up everybody? Today I want to talk about how you download, install, and configure Blender so that we can get started learning how to use it. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go to Google and we're going to search for Blender Daily Builds. And we, we don't want to go to the Blender.org website. So if we go there, it'll have a download Blender 27. You do not want to do this. You want to go here, Blender Daily Builds, click here. And right here you're going to see different builds that you want to download. So if you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, you pick the respective download. So I'm going to grab this Windows 64-bit, the official one, and I'm going to click here and download it. Okay, now that I've downloaded it, uh, let's uh, Alt-Tab over to my download section. Here's my zip file. So one of the reasons we downloaded the zip file is because, one, it has some of the latest builds and the things that we're going to want to be able to do in those latest builds. So we need that for features. But the other reason is that this is a portable build. So that means that wherever we extract it, it can run from there if we set it up correctly. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say extract all. And I'm going to look for a place. In my case, I'm going to put it in in my Dropbox in a folder called Blender CW. C CW would be my name and I'm going to select that folder and then I'm going to extract. Okay, now the files are extracted. I'll go into the folder and you'll see I've got this large file. Now one of the things I might mention is that the reason why I put it in Dropbox or I could put it on Google Drive or I could put it on a thumb drive is so that I can run this application from any computer I wish and that's really valuable. So here we go. I'm going to double click here and you'll see down in here, here's the app that we're going to run, but I'm not going to open it yet because what I want to do is go into 2.79 folder and create a new folder here. And I'm going to call that config. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell Blender when it launches to store all my settings, my user preferences, and my startup scene file in that folder. So right now, as you can see, we have nothing in it. So let's go ahead and back, uh, back up to here. And I'm going to launch blender the reason for that command window by the way is if if there's any kind of error that shows up when blender launches it will be shown in that command window and blender won't won't launch so that's why we have that command window there so uh, uh, here's the blender screen this is the version of it one of the things I want to do right off the bat is I'm going to go into my file and under my preferences and the very first thing I'm going to do is go to my input and I'll say select with left and then I'll say save user settings and close it okay so now that I've done that let's go back and let's look at that folder that we were talking about earlier which is the config folder and you see now the user preferences are stored here so because of that I've got a, now a portable version of blender okay now we want to start configuring the user preferences so first let's launch blender resize it get it right and the first uh, under file user preferences what we're going to do is we're going to go to the interface and in the interface we're going to say rotate around selection zoom to mouse position and then we save the user settings next we go to the editing tab and in the editing tab you'll see that we have global undo checked and let's change this from 32 to 256 now we have 256 steps that we can use for undo next we go to the input tab and we've already made the one adjustment we want there and as we want to select with left uh, so it's very similar to the way we select objects in SketchUp next we'll go to the themes tab and we only have one edit to make here I'm going to go in and choose 3d view scroll all the way down to the bottom it says outline width by clicking and dragging to the right, that's how all these requesters work, we're changing the number to 3. We want the outline to be a little bit bigger and bolder so that we can easily see what's going on the screen. Again, save user settings. By the way, you can save user settings each tab or you can save user settings at the end of editing all the preferences. It works both ways. You may have noticed we skipped the add-ons we're going to get back to that in a minute. Before we go to the system tab, I'm going to close this preferences real quick and show you something. So over here we have this tool shelf. And we also have, if you 
type in the N key, the properties pane. I just want to show you that, that the screen, the screen real estate is right between these two tabs. Um, I'm going to move these out just a little bit more. So we're getting smaller and smaller as we move these out. So now I want to go back into, I'm going to go back into the user preferences setting here. And in the system file, you'll see that uh, I'm going to hit this region overlap. And now you can see as I move this around, we can actually see underneath these, these, these palettes. Back in the system user preferences, we also want to talk about the Cycles compute device. Cycles is the rendering engine. And if you use NVIDIA, then, and I have two NVIDIA cards in here, a 1080 and a, 10, a 980, it'll use both of them to render and makes unbiased render work much, much faster. So I've checked for both of those. I can also check this, which is actually means I can use also use my CPU to do the rendering as well. Okay, next we're going to configure the add-ons. And add-ons are basically plugins for Blender. Add-ons here, and we're just going to search. These are plugins that actually come with Blender. So first one we're going to search for is Bool. That's called Bool Tool. We'll just click on that. The next one we're going to search for is called Loop Tools, L-O-O-P. And we click on that. And these, just by clicking on these, they install them. That's because they already exist. If we wanted to, we can install additional add-ons from files here, or we can actually place them in a uh, the, the Python scripts directly in a folder. There's a bunch of ones that come with Blender, but we're only going to use a few of them right now. We'll add more later. Copy Attributes menu is that one. Extra Objects. We'll add both these, the curve and the mesh. And then again, once we do, we save save user settings, interface, looks good, editing, global undo, input, left mouse button, add-ons, we added all the add-ons, the themes, we added the uh, sizes there, there's nothing to do in the file, and the system we added uh, the CUDA and this region overlap. So I'm going to save the settings now, and we're finished configuring the user preferences. We still need to configure the startup default screen. We'll do that next. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the layout, the current layout with panels. Each one of these areas right here are called panels. And if you look at this little box down here, this icon, this tells you a list of all the different panels that you have available in your editor. Right now this is a 3D view, that one that we're looking at right here. This one over here, Outliner View. If you're in the 3D view, you can just click, left click here on here and pull this out and you're going to get another panel. And of course in here, as we saw earlier, if we want we can hit the T key and we can hit the N key to clear out these panels. It can be really tricky to try and remove a panel for instance, if I try and click or, or just move this, I'm actually adding another panel, which is not what I want to do. But what I can do is I can click here and you see this little arrow show up and that merges that panel. And if I want to do the same thing over here, I'll crack, click here and I will merge it into that panel. I want to get rid of this timeline panel because we typically don't use that. Now, this is a very interesting thing. If you notice this, we want to collapse this one into the one up above. We want to remove it. I'm going to click and move it directly up. So now you see that I have the up arrow, but that's going to make the timeline, if I do that, that makes the timeline the main window. I'm going to, while my mouse is still held down, I'm dragging it down, and you can see that it made that, it, it, it shows a smaller arrow pointing down. If I let go now, it goes away. So if I want to create another timeline view, I can come down here like this, and I can click over here, and click on the timeline view and now you'll see it pops up and again if I want to remove it I have to click straight up drag straight up keep my mouse down my left mouse down button down drag straight down and it goes away next we're going to configure a help panel that we can use to refer to when we want to remember keyboard shortcuts so let's get started the first thing I want to do is I'm going to stretch this out a little bit over here and then I want to create a pane in between these two. And I want to do that by just clicking here and dragging down. And once I've done that, I can move this down and I can move this down as well. So this is the outliner. 
here's one of our global properties panel and now I'm going to turn this panel right here to something that can house an image. You may notice that sometimes the icon for the window designator is at the bottom, sometimes at the top. Here it's at the top. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look and I'm going to find UV image editor and I'm going to click and now I've got that set. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to find the image that I'm going to put there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this particular website. It's called G-I-U-D-A-N-S-K-Y, Gidansky.com, and click on the downloads. And then in the downloads, there's a Learn Blender with a poster infographic. I'm going to click on that, and as you can see, there's this great poster here that we're going to use. And I'm going to download the free version. So first, I'm going to go down to my downloads folder, find out where, uh, where that lo that's located. Okay, and here, here's the file right here. You can see, I'll slide this out. You can see here's what it is. I'm going to take that and cut it, and I'm going to go into my Blender C, my Blender. Remember that config file that we created? I'm going to paste it right in here. Back to Blender, and in here we're going to say Open. Here's the file. I'll select it, and I'll say Open Image, and there we have it. And so now we've got this. Now I can I can use the same controls that I use to manipulate this scene. So scroll the middle mouse wheel, wheel. Just like these are the exact same controls we use in SketchUp. Shift to pan. And if I want, I can hit the Alt F10 button and that expands that 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 window to the full screen. And now I can toggle it and I can look in, I can zoom in and everything. And then I can go back Alt F10 back out of it. So there are a few more things that we need to do to finish up our scene setup so that when we save it, it becomes the default startup scene. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to set my unit. So I'm going to come over here to this third icon, which is called uh, the scene icon. And under the length of the units, I'm going to come up here and say metric. So now I know that this is going to be represented in metric. For instance, this dimensions for this object are both two meters. So with that known, I'm going to take this, I'm going to grab this blue arrow, and that's, and as you drag it up, while my mouse is down, I'm going to hit the one button, and it actually moves it up, so now it's flat on the ground. The only problem with this, if I hit the, if I, if I try and scale this, so I go to my object, and I say transform, and I say scale, notice it scales at about the center, so it doesn't keep it on the ground, which we might want to keep it on the ground, if so I'm going to go to the uh, object and I'm going to say transform, I'm going to say origin of this object to the 3D cursor and the 3D cursor is that little thing down there. So now when I hit scale it's going to scale the way I want to. I can also hit the Z and the X and the Y to scale around any one of those. Okay so I've got that done. Next I want to add a mesh and a plane and it's actually right underneath that and I will hit the S key and we're going to scale that out pretty big just so we have an area. So now we have something that looks pretty good in terms of giving us the ability to, to put something on a plane and render it. And then lastly, with this with this uh, end key, I'm going to go, I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to say I want to use ambient occlusion. So it puts a little bit of a shadow on there. And you see how that works. So once I've done that, I'm going to hit the Control U key and it says Save Startup File. And once I've done that, I will go back into my my config folder that we created earlier, and there's that startup file right there. So let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to go back into here. That's been saved. I'm going to close this. I don't. I'm just going to quit it come back and I'll relaunch it and you'll see that we now have all of the settings that we've set up the user preferences the ambient occlusion the default scene we have the help screen over here everything set up exactly as we like it so that's how we download and configure blender to get started one more thing I want to talk about and that is another way to create a help file that helps you remember shortcuts. And we're going to use the same pane up here. So what I'm going to do is click here and I'm going to go to the 
text editor. I want to create a new file and now with a new file I can actually paste uh, some text I already have. I will click on this little plus sign and I'm going to say I'm going to leave it, uh, line numbers word wrap and syn but I want to check syntax highlight so notice when I check it it changes the color right there so that's kind of cool that'll keep us let us see the difference between what the shortcut is and actually what the description of the shortcut is and then I can basically take this and slide it all the way back to where there once we've done that all we now need to do next is do a save as and again we'll navigate to our config folder and we're going to call this help.txt and we hit the save button and now we're done so once we've done that remember we have to also do the control U save the startup file so now as we go through this we can actually edit this text file actually, let's let's go ahead and let's quit it yes and we're gonna launch it again and there's our file and if I want to add some stuff and I can basically come back into the text and do another save and I saved it to that help file and I'll close there and we'll launch it again and you'll see ah, guess what it's not saved and why is that because it stores this data somewhere else in that help file so what really needs to happen is if we're going to save this we need to save it in a way So what we're going to do is we're going to save the startup file and by saving the startup file it'll save this. So now control U save startup file and now we close this launch it and there it is right there that works. So that's a nice way that you can start to enter in shortcut keys while you learn how to use the program.